This is part four. <laughs> I don't know what you wanted me to do. I was like, I fucked up last day. I was like, I'm not doing it. That's gonna be. We'll cue that up somehow. <laughs> um, wait, I want to keep asking what. Long That's such started. a good question. Oh, thank you. Um, good answer too. And the fact you are asking that is really great because it seems like you're really thinking about all these things for yourself and how you want it to work. I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna, you know. Yeah. And it's like you, you were saying about, well, I, the, some really great advice I'd gotten from a, an acting teacher was never to treat your your abilities as an actor as being fragile. Mm. Like, don't anyone, I can't, you know, like, yeah, like unless, don't talk to me. Yeah, don't talk to me unless it's yeah, this yeah, way yeah. or that way. I can't, you know, focus. Mm -hmm. It's like never, never do yourself that disservice by treating yourself as someone who's fragile and can't do it unless, you know, the mm -hmm. wind is blowing the right way. And I think that that's a good, like, mm -hmm. and that's what you were saying. It's like, you know, yeah. you, you, can, you, do, yeah. you, get, you step in, you step out, you're joking, you, then you're back, in, you know. Yeah, you and you can do it standing on your head if you have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you may have to. Yeah. And you may, <laughs> you may be on your head. <laughs> so did you have any, any doubts while you were shooting? Any worries? Um, any doubts? <coughs> any personal freak outs or, yeah, while you were in the middle of, whether it was like, I don't know if you got that shot or just how's it going? Is this cohesively working? I think that everyone has those voices in their head that are like panic voices like uh -huh. I can't do it yeah no like I cannot do this because yeah. it's like you're you have to jump off a cliff yeah so it's like why would you want to do that kind uh -huh. of, you know like why would you want to go there yeah when you could just stay at home and do something else yeah um or like call a friend to go see a movie yeah or just you know stay in your pajamas all day uh so so because that it, because it's scary there are mm -hmm. voices like oh, this is not for you, or you shouldn't really be doing mm -hmm. this, or, you know. I know Meryl Streep always talks about how every time she gets a new job, she's mm -hmm. always like, oh, I'm not an actress. Mm -hmm. I can't, like, oh, I can't do this. Yeah. Like, I'm not even an actress. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really incredible that she admits to those voices. Mm -hmm. But they don't really do anything. Like, they don't help. Yeah. So you kind of have to just turn them down mm -hmm. as if, you're turning the volume down on a stereo, like they just are not here, and yeah. then you turn up the volume on the ones that yeah. are internally within you, the voices who, that are saying you can do it, and mm -hmm. that you are capable, and that you should be using your voice in this way, and you mm -hmm. should be telling this particular story at this mm -hmm. particular time. Yeah. Um, and I think when you have a purpose like that, you know, for me it was that I felt like the people who have been sexually abused don't necessarily have a voice in the world, mm -hmm. and they don't have movies made about them often mm -hmm. or people who have like interesting different different kind of dynamics within relationships yeah. those are not the kind of things you see <coughs> in regular romantic mm -hmm. comedies mm -hmm. so i thought it would be good to like give a purpose it's just it's just like you because you have a sense of purpose mm -hmm. then you yeah. feel like you can do it okay. because you're speaking to yeah. something and you're making the world a better place by going to work every day yeah and then your wee voices are like you know, mm -hmm. they don't even exist after a certain moment. And I don't remember having um, specific doubts, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's not it's not an intellectual concept. It's not like, oh, I shouldn't do this because it's, pr because it's like a logical thing, <coughs> uh -huh. you know? Um, I think that, I think that the, the important thing is to be, confident and understand that like you're doing it for a very specific purpose mm -hmm. and then all of that other stuff just falls by the wayside and you forget that you fall off the cliff like yeah. you fall off you're already yeah. halfway down yeah. the cliff like by the time you realize you're down there yeah so <laughs> it's an interesting whirlwind yeah definitely yeah. but it's good to not panic <laughs> definitely <good to> not <laughs> and panic. i don't remember panicking that's amazing i really don't yeah. remember panicking yeah. and i think it's good obviously for the the captain of the ship to not be freaking out yeah you know because yeah. i've been on sets where the captain of the ship is freaking out and i'm like let's Oof. figure this out yeah. let's really sit down a moment yeah you know, like what's going on yeah um yeah does that answer your question mm -hmm. definitely who did you um who were your eyes 
you know, who, who were your eyes while you were doing the work? Mm -hmm. Who did you look to and trust? I know you had Cora and Jen were there all the time. Cora and Jen, Andre, Andre. and Jason. Mm -hmm. um, Jason was really helpful because we were both acting and so we were both like, we weren't like, uh, not that Cora and Jen were not doing mm -hmm. anything, but we were both like on the lane yeah. um, in front of the camera. And so mm -hmm. being able to, in rehearsal, like figure stuff out with mm -hmm. him beforehand was really, really, really helpful. He's mm -hmm. just a good person to act with mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. He's a great person to direct um, because he also has those the feelings of like, wait, should I do this? Should I be doing this? Is this mm -hmm. allowed? You mm -hmm. know? Um, so it was very... Um, helpful to have all of those eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and Nick Monster was there too. Nick was very focused on um, all aspects of his job as well, which uh -huh. was really, really cool. And I do remember having a number of moments with him that were really, really just beautiful and really? encouraging. And it's so nice because um, it was a set filled with friends. So yeah. everybody was just really lovely. Um, and I feel like having the ability to sit as the director after the film and mm -hmm. watch, you know, everything that we captured mm -hmm. um, was really like an honour and a joy and I feel like I was able at that point to really see how much we had achieved, wow. you mm -hmm. know, because I wasn't really thinking about like the final product mm -hmm. while I was doing it in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. I was really getting, I was focusing on like the moment. Mm -hmm. So that by the time I got to the cutting room, I was like, whoa, like we really yeah. did something here that's different yeah. and good, maybe, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, were there any happy accidents while you were shooting? Oh my god, there was one that was so beautiful. Uh -huh. um, there were a lot of really amazing, the, it, was a day, it was days filled with happy accidents, like uh -huh. magical moments. Mm -hmm things that would happen that were just like beyond explanation. And one of those was that um, in the scene where uh, my character is masturbating, mm -hmm. we had, we, ha we shot that scene and that was fine. Mm -hmm. And then um, in a different scene, we had set up the camera so that you could see that she had put like her sheets uh -huh. on the window oh, yeah. to like yeah. hide from him. Uh -huh or to hide herself from him, and uh, the camera was set up for that scene, and the wind just happened to blow, and it blew that mm -hmm. moment where the, yeah, the, the, the shot. beautiful yeah. Yeah. shot of like billowing. this yeah. billowing sheet that's yeah. like from, it looks like it's just like God given, it's yeah. like amazing, um, and it was basically, it wasn't something that was in the script, mm -hmm. and that moment was so beautiful that I was like, let's use this mm -hmm. for that moment mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. she's masturbating. Oh, okay. And so that then became something that was like actually a really well directed masturbation scene. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like out of nowhere. I love it. <laughs> um, let's see. I know that you told me that you watched a lot of films before you shot this. Yeah. And that you watched them, oh, so you watched certain ones over and over again. Yeah. Could you tell us a couple of those films, maybe that you found um, were a helpful influence? The feature films. Whatever, whatever you. Because there's, I had to watch a lot of erotica for the film, so uh -huh. that was a separate thing okay. I just had to do. Uh -huh. Um, it wasn't exactly like artistically inspiring, but uh -huh. I had to do it to figure out like what kind of erotica she would watch. Uh -huh. But I really like Kishlovsky, and I really like. Um, any, I mean, basically any Polish director mm -hmm. from the 80s, like Agnieszka mm -hmm. Holland, people who were making films um, during that period of time in Poland. Mm -hmm. And I would watch them with the sound off because I'd seen them before because I used to grow up watching them or I grew up watching them. And so yeah. watching them with the sound off kind of gave me this, just the visuals, yeah. like just the visual story. And it yeah. enabled me to see the film from the shots mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. And think of it in that way, like, okay, so the, these are the colours and this is the way that it's moving and this is yeah. how fast it is. And and that was really enlightening and it kind of opened those films up to me in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to do that with any film that I really have had 
but any film that's impacted me, mm -hmm. I'll usually watch again without sound, mm -hmm. just so that I see the shots. Yeah. Because yeah. I can't really do it while I'm watching it, because I'm just such a viewer, yeah. <laughs> I'm such an audience member. Yeah. I just get taken away, so um, that really helped me to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, anything that's like inspiring in any way is fun to do, it's mm -hmm. fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to sort of see how people have taken things or how people have taken their own journey as filmmakers. Mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting to watch like someone's first film, then their second, their third, their fourth. Yeah. I think that's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. So I do that too. Cool.